Hello and welcome to Once Driven Forever Smitten. Do you like my gonk? Just on my way to pick up Kenzo's Astra GT16 valve and go and get the boot vinyl done on it at my mate Keith who runs the sign shop um, and thought might as well do uh, some video about the car because uh, it's had quite a lot of work done on it and it's uh, looking pretty well at the moment. It's also an absolute scorcher of a day again in Scotland in July. It's usually pouring the rain when the schools are off. This is amazing. I mean, just look. Look at the weather. I know I've got quite a habit of it banging on about the weather in my videos, but this is amazing. Love it. Here we go, it's looking well, nice and shiny. Just had a polish quite recently with a carbonara wax, according to Kenzo. Did you really have to start that saw going as soon as I started doing this? Aye, I just needing the vinyl put onto the boot um, because it's been painted, uh, so Keith's a man for that at the sign shop. Aye, quite looking forward to driving this, I haven't um, driven it for a long time, I did used to own it. I just want to uh, point something out here. Um, it went away and got the wheels balanced on the car uh, the other day and let's have a look at what the tyre fitter has done. He's only gone and put the bloody things on back to front. I need you. These are coming off it anyway because uh, the tyres are a bit... Um, they seem to be a bit knackered after sitting for too long and there's a set of Astra GSI wheels down the workshop with Yokohama's on it, so aye. What an idiot, just as well it's not raining. Could you forget how tiny these are? <laughs> no, meant to tighten his power steering belt. Aye, this car, um, Pete used to own it. Um, I think it was maybe only one owner from new. Completely standard car, and I bought it off Pete in 2011. Uh, no, 2012, and um, yeah, I kept it for a while. I ended up spending a very long time in uh, at a painter's who kept it for about a bloody year, I think. Um, but Kenzo decided he really, really, really wanted it, and eventually I just gave in and sold it to him. Um, but uh, it's a, a really uh, tidy original car. It's not like it's, uh, I mean, it's honest, like it's had a bit of welding here and there as you would expect. But it's really original and uh, it's always been a good car to drive. And it's quick as well. This is a, a pre cat version. So, well, a tank is super unleaded in it. This thing really doesn't hang about. see too much of the interior from there but we'll just have to um, see give it a go
even, I can't show you it. Um, the ref counter's in complete darkness. Surprised he's not fixed that. Bye, these things can go. I mean, they're just... Just realised I've got to take the grab handle off and take off this panel here as well. But I've got these nice trim tool gadgets to go and remove the little plastic rivets nicely instead of um, gouging them with a screwdriver. Because they're all intact, which is nice because the car's really original. Proper sweat on removing that. Should have got him to do it. They hangs in a bloody nightmare. Horrible. At least they came out being a warm day. As soon as you tried it on a cold day, they'd probably just all snap. Uh, because the car's had various bits of paintwork done, it's missing some of the black vinyl off the side. This is one of the remaining original bits, I think. It's coming off in about a million tiny pieces. First bit of vinyl going on the door there. Lovely. That's a new kind of material. It's not new, it's meant for replacing bits like this. So yeah. it's, it's close to factory. Part of the material is used by all the manufacturers. Perfect. That's clever that, I've never seen that before. That's genius. What's it called? Uh, knifeless tape. Knifeless tape. So essentially just Hmm. Pull it back, put right through the film. There you go. Wait, hey! Knifeless tape. Ah, this is the tricky bit because of the number plate recess. And the um, paintwork, because Kenzo has been hitting it with the carbonara wax all the time. Is it, will the material have enough in it to push in to the middle?
will do yet. Ah, that's worked a treat. That material's got enough flexibility in it that it's pushed down into the number plate recess. Brilliant. Perfect. Job done. The contactor again. Thanks very much. Alrighty. Well, the last video clip you'll have seen was the vinyl being applied to the GTE. Um, that was about nine or ten days ago because since then I got pinged by the bloody Covid app and got told to self-isolate for six days. Uh, there's been nothing wrong with me, I haven't had Covid or anything like that, but I've done the isolation and now I'm just back out again. Um, but as a result of that, it meant I couldn't make a trip to England, which would have seen me view a Vectra, which is the same colour as this CDX, to get some panels. Well, I was going to buy the whole car, maybe I still will. We'll come, come back to that in a bit. And I also couldn't pick up an aircon pipe that I needed for this either, so... The, the CDX is uh, pretty um, hot inside at the moment with the black leather to say the least. So I'm about 28 degrees outside I think, I think today. Um, but So I'm a little bit behind with all of that. We're just going down to the unit this afternoon to do a couple of things in the GTE because we're going to take a run down the Scottish borders um, down to Duns to see our, we're going to see our truck uh, for my magazine truck and driver for a photo shoot and we're also going to get all the video stuff together on the GTE um, to put together the the, um, the story on it which I think I might just split off into a separate video um, so it just exists on its own and we'll just have the, the kind of vinyl stuff uh, there separately well, it's good to be back down at the garage, but we really, really, really need to tidy this place up. Like, have a proper reorganise, get all the stuff um, at least tidied away properly, and also uh, write down all the stuff that we've got in here, so we know what is in here, and potentially sell some of it, you know? Because it's just piling up everywhere. Um, this... Um, Astra GSI behind me here that Kenzo inexplicably bought um, which is extremely rusty and also kind of weird because it's on an end reg um, that uh, is going to get reshelled he's going to be down soon with the GTE uh, to tell me all about that he's bought a three door shell from down south which doesn't have any rust on it so everything is going to come out that and go into this solid shell which is by far, by far the best idea, because this thing, um, it's already been welded extensively back in like 2007, 2008, and now it's needing welded extensively again. Um, but as it stands, it's just kind of disappearing as we pile more and more parts on top of it. So the uh, task for today is just a bit of GTE uh, prep before we take it down the borders for a nice video. Uh, but we're going to nick the wheels off of this because it's got the standard 15 inch GSI wheels on it which um, have got a nice new set of Yokohama tyres on it which will be ideal for the GTE because currently it's got the speed lines on it but as I mentioned earlier on those tyres are a bit um, warped, they're not too happy so I am uh, going to back the GSI out and then we'll start uh, lifting all the stuff off the top of this and um, get the tyres off it. Kenzo also reckons there's a problem, uh, something to do with the fuel pump really on the GTE, so we'll get a look at that as well. Hey, and it's about 30 degrees, it's absolutely boiling.
Right, so after a bit of tidying out, wheels are off that thing there. After GSI 15 inch wheels, you go into this, which is currently experiencing a bit of misfire, which was traced to the fuel pump relay the other night, but not sure if that's really what was uh, causing the issue. So I'll just have a look around it. Maybe change the crank sensor anyway, just in case it's starting to break down inside. Uh, which can cause that sort of thing. But I've already checked the throttle position switch. I can hear that clicking right as it should just there. So I I'm gonna swap the crank sensor for a known good one just because. Now the good old fuel pump really is a common cause of failure to start. Uh, but often you can find that it's down to corrosion in the pins, like it's gone all green in here or on one of them or possibly on the relay itself so it's worth checking that it will pull it can pull the fuel and the spark out again the same as the crank sensor um, you can uh, force feed the fuel pump as well if you bridge out a couple of these pins if you if you need to do that and uh, I'll spray some contact cleaner down in amongst here as well and swap the fuel pump really over for a known good one uh, and we'll just see how it behaves. It does look a little bit green in there. I do wonder if it's maybe not getting that good a contact because the car has spent a fair amount of time sitting about periodically. So aye, right, let's get that cleaned. Now look, I've even actually bought proper electrical contact cleaner. Splashing out. A uh, bit of a bit of electrical contact cleaner on them ones. Yeah, way too much. We'll just uh, easy relay in and out a few times. Let's see if that makes any difference yeah it's definitely you can see it's taking the uh, that kind of green coloration out so hopefully maybe just a bit of bad contact now I've just been round and checked the induction pipe there for any splits and this donut rubber here because they split inside and they can also cause wee bits of rough running and misfiring and strange behaviour but that's all alright and this is pretty fresh. I say I've checked the throttle position switch as well to make sure it's working alright so uh, aye there's not too much else uh, I need to check at this stage. What it's sometimes worth doing as well if your car's not running quite as it should is just ease back the the rubber boot that's on the end of the plugs. This one's off the crank sensor, but you get it on the coolant temp sensor plug particularly, uh, where the wires can just wear out and break. Obviously, you can see these ones are all in good condition, but there's uh, quite often broken wires hiding under that that bit there, so. Alright, so I'm just going to change this anyway, just because, uh, for one off another engine, just in case, because they can stop the engine working all, all together. If the crank sensor goes, you get no fuel and no spark, um, but occasionally they can start to deteriorate inside and cause uh, slightly rough running issues before they eventually, you go out to it one day and it doesn't start at all. I'm just going to rob the crank sensor out this handy XE that's sitting here that's destined for that Astra Saloon next door but the crank sensor's located in with the front engine mount in there usually with a 10 mil bolt sometimes it's a Torx maybe an Allen holding it in but that's where that hides you just uh, undo that one bolt and it'll um, ease out proper awkward to get into the um, crank sensor 
bolt and only just get on it with a 10 mil open end of a 10 mil spanner. Which turns about a tenth of a, a turn at a time. But not usually, that's not what. Right, uh, there we go. Crank sensor out. Ah, well. Mm, it's not in the best of condition. Oh, I'll have to change the camera. You can see from that now I've removed it that, well, the wiring inside is still intact, but all the protective uh, coating is worn away on that part of it. Maybe we wouldn't be doing it any favours. Don't know if that's an original one. Anyway. This one's rather nicer and it's GM so ideal right, well hopefully it's not gonna be doing any more um right. so just uh, double check the tyre pressures using this little Continental tyre inflator I just found randomly in a box of bits, just handy. But aye, that's uh, 195 50 15 paradas on it now. And uh, uh, it should sit well on the road with them on it and hopefully that little check over of the fuel pump relay and the crank sensor solved the little uh, misfire that it's been having. Uh, should find out.